So did you ever have any domestic issues in your marriage? No, no. Um, my, me and my son had a little quarrel, um, but that was over him having his buddies in the basement drinking and uh, smoking some weed. I came home from work one day and my wife told me what was going on and I needed to go down and run them off. So that's what I did. And me and my son had a little bit of a situation, not really nothing. It was a push shove and his friends had to leave. But with my wife, no, never. We are going to watch an Iowa parole hearing that might shock you. If you're not familiar with Iowa parole hearings, they are, I think, the most dangerous the most bizarre the parole board there's there's their negligence is shocking and this parole hearing perfectly demonstrates that now normally i keep the information that i have in my pocket i don't reveal it until the unpacking but i wanted to try something different this time i want you to have the information that sir richard pulled up this man has a violent record that dates back over two decades. He's locked up for another such DV offense that he committed just a year ago to the date of this parole hearing. Now, let's see how the parole board handles this hearing, handles the way that he answers them without any honesty, without any accountability. Do they hold him accountable or do they send him on his way with a pat on the back and a compliment? Maybe many compliments. I'll share all the details of his long, brutal record at the end. I'll bet him. Hey, Scott. Hey. Hey. Uh, with Mr. Is it Rickabah? Yep. William Rickabah. Yep. All right. He don't go by Bill? Uh, he might. I used okay. To him, I used to use to call him Mr. Rickabaugh. So, Mr. Rickabaugh, no will, no bill, just Mr. Rickabaugh. That's what I go by. <laughs> I think right. you go by Bill. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and uh, every, as you said, everything is no changes. No, nope, no change. I'll give you a warning though. He is a talker, so yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> all right. Work release to uh, Fort Des Moines. All right, colleagues, any questions for? Do not. All right, well, hey, bring them on in, Scott. Good, I'll go grab them. Come on in, have a seat right there. Okay, and then tell your name and number. Good morning. Thank you for seeing me. All right, good morning. Uh, my number is 1002889. All right, thank you, Mr. Rickabaugh. All right, and do you wish to proceed? Yes, sir. All Sorry, right. I didn't have another color to wear. <laughs> oh, well, you know, you came in with that orange hunting color, so, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but nevertheless, how this is going to go, what we're going to do is start off and ask you some questions. You're going to give us some information as to how you came about being incarcerated. And then I may have a few other questions for you. And then after my questions, then I will uh, pass the baton to my colleagues to see if they have any questions and then you do your best to answer their questions for them. After you've answered those questions, then what we will do is I will turn it back over to you just in case some information came up that you didn't get a chance to share in the questions, you'll get a last chance to, you know, to give us some parting information that would be helpful towards this process in considering your transition, potential transition. Then after that, what we're gonna have you do is sit back, relax, and not engage or talk to us, but you're going to get a chance to hear us go into deliberations where you'll hear us communicate from the answers that you provided us. We're going to go ahead and discuss that before you and to come to some um, a resolution towards you know, a decision for your case. Then after that, I'm going to come back and try to explain what that discussion was and to give you an understanding of that process 
of the codes that would uh, come about to the best of my ability. And then uh, that will uh, conclude our interview and then we'll just go our merry way. Okay. All right. So with that being said, can you give us, you know, a snapshot or give us, you know, a little summary as to what was going on and what led you to be incarcerated? Um, I, I got out of Fort Des Moines a couple of years ago um, for an OWI. Um, I went through a divorce, 30 year marriage, and I was trying to date again and got myself in a little bit of trouble. So um, I got my own apartment. After I got out of Fort, I was doing good, working for uh, Hormel. I worked there for two years, double shifts. Um, I got laid off because the smokehouse caught on fire. And uh, I, I was struggling for about three months. And I got behind in my rent. I was getting ready to be evicted. And um, I ran into, I went to the store to get cigarettes. And I ran into a woman that I, I hadn't seen her in 50 years. Um, I went to elementary school with her. Um, she asked how I was doing. I told her the situation. And uh, she asked where I was at, and I told her, well, the day I was being evicted, I was going to have to go to the homeless shelter. And I told her that. I was scared to go to the homeless shelter because I'd never been homeless before. And uh, anyway, she showed up and uh, asked me to come out of town with her to a small town. And uh, I could hang out with her until I could figure out something to do. So that is what I did. Uh, she was coming out of a marriage herself. Um, and uh, so I went out of town with her. I didn't, uh, I didn't know at the time she was manic depressant. And it led to some problems really quick. And uh, I made some bad choices and uh, not the right actions to the situation. Okay. Did you have a PO during this time? Uh, yes, I was just getting off uh, parole right before uh, I went out of town with her. And I had the woman take me to my parole office to get my parole papers uh, from Jennifer. Best parole officer I've ever had in my life. Hopefully the only one. But um, anyway, um, as I was getting my parole papers, uh, I introduced Jennifer to her. And uh, Jennifer did look at me and asked me, are you sure you know what you're doing? And instead of manning up and going to the homeless shelter, I was taking the path of least resistance. I thought that that would solve all my problems. And I really should have uh, paid attention to what Jennifer was saying when she asked me if I was sure. Maybe she seen something I didn't at the time. Um, I was just scared to be homeless. And uh, yes, I successfully graduated in my parole. And uh, like I said, I had no issues in my parole whatsoever. And I was doing really, really good. Um, coming out of a 30 year marriage, and I'm 57. At that time, I was 52, finding myself single again, trying to figure out what to do in life was throwing me for a loop. Okay. I appreciate the transparency. I appreciate you sharing uh, how good your PO Jennifer was to you and that she was very insightful and had your best interest at heart, it appears. Always. Uh, so, you know, you know, sometimes POs get a bad rap and uh, hearing you talk about what she tried to give you those warning signs and you didn't take heed, uh, uh, um, that, that that's very, that's for me, that's very comforting being a former PO. So um, yeah, really good relationship. She cared. She really cared. Okay. So as you potentially prepare for an opportunity, another opportunity, what are some things that uh Mr. Rickaba is going to look to do better or better yet, what is the plan that you have for us? Okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to try dating no more, that's for sure. I got 13 grandkids, and uh, three of them are still really young. Um, since I've been here, I've been on the dog program taking care of Daisy, old Daisy. Um, I decided I'm going to get a little dog, and I'm going to have my granddaughters uh, come stay with me as much as they can. And um, 
I think just my family and a little dog, I don't need much more. I'm at that age where I don't need to be out there trying to rekindle my childhood or nothing like that. Uh, just work and family, that's about it, and my church. In your church? Okay. Yeah. Right. I was a deacon for 10 years at Carlisle Christian, and I was in trouble. I was in charge of the troubled youth group. <laughs> and then uh, my marriage went south. My wife had cancer, and we battled that for seven years. And um, it took it. She's okay. She survived. But it took a really toll on our marriage, and we ended it after 30 years. So, and I hadn't dated or anything like that since I was in my 20s. Things have changed. <laughs> well, you know, having a support, a foundational support group that can help, you know, with facilitating the uh, pros and cons of what could be helpful and beneficial uh, with potentially Jennifer, you know, who is the PO to talk some of those situational things through. Uh, uh, probably could have been more beneficial in you swallowing your pride a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I discussed the, um, the situation with her and that I might have to go to a homeless shelter. And um, she, she tried to give me all the information she could and all the help. And, um, but our time was over. She had to let me go. And um, she just wished me the best luck. And then uh, when I come to get my paperwork, uh, my pro paper, um, I introduced her to the, to the lady. And she's like, because she thought I was going to go to the homeless shelter. And I, you don't know how much I wish I would have heeded that. I should have just been a man and went, you know. <laughs> but um, the place where the shelter's at, it's kind of a bad area. I was nervous. Um, I've never been out. I've, I've always had, you know, a wife. I, I only had one marriage. So I was married that to that same woman for 30 years. Uh, my grandchildren, my life was complete and then it was turned upside down. So, um, but I will take time to pay closer attention to others' thoughts next time. So, Yeah. No, I, um, it's good to hear you recognize uh, when Jennifer gave you the WTH look. What the heck? <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm going to reserve the rest of my questions and turn it over to my colleagues. And uh, let's see, Jesse. <clears throat> Hello, how you doing today? I'm Jesse. Pretty good, pretty good. So did you ever have any domestic issues in your marriage? No, no. Um, my, me and my son had a little quarrel, um, but that was over him having his buddies in the basement drinking and uh, smoking some weed. I came home from work one day and my wife told me what was going on and I needed to go down and run them off. So that's what I did. And me and my son had a little bit of a situation, not really nothing. It was a push shove and his friends had to leave. But with my wife, no, never. So what, what do you think made this turn physical with this, what got you here? Um, manic, her being manic depressant, I was, I was not familiar with that. Um, it kind of took me off my rocker a little. Um, the minute I got that pro paper after we got back out of town, um, she started hiding my phone and acting weird and talking to herself. Well, when I talked to her neighbor baby, that's when I found out she was supposed to be on medicine and she was supposed to see a, a psychotherapist every Friday. Right. And I was unaware of that when I went out there. And uh, my cell phone didn't have service in that small town. It was in Lacona, Iowa. Um, they only carry U.S. cellular out there. So I had problems uh, once I found my phone getting out of there. Okay. Were, was there a knife in, did you have a sling on? No, no, no. Um, I was a chef of Prairie Meadows and I have a roll with uh, my chef knives and her drawer was full of knives 
and there was nowhere to put mine, so we hung them in the kitchen. Okay. Was that knife ever used in assault? No, 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 no. Uh, she grabbed the knife and threw it at me one night, um, and then uh, she that the night that we was there, she was in the kitchen throwing stuff around. So I don't know if any of those ever got in anything or anything. I don't remember any of that. Okay, so it was I kind guess, of a real yeah. weird situation for me. So I guess what I'm asking is, you're are you saying that this is an isolated incident? The domestic is that nothing like that's ever happened again. And you feel confident? Oh yes, sir. Like definitely, definitely. I'm not. I'm not a violent individual. Um, me and my wife, we had a really good 30 year marriage um, up until the time she came down with cancer. Um, I, I was a deacon in my church. Um, basically, all all my days were spent working with the church and the community. I even uh, did the community dinners. I cooked and spent my own money for all that. Um, helping others is what I, that was my whole life. So, and I, I, I spent most of my days, um, most of my weekends were spent with my grandkids. We were either fishing, mushroom mutton, or serving the church. So. I have no more questions for you. Thank you for answering the ones I did have. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jesse. Um, um, I think you guys have covered all of the questions that I have planned to ask. Oh. Well, I have one question. Um, there, Mr. Rickawa, there was some mention in the minutes that said that she had meth or there was meth in the vehicle. Um, can you talk to us about that? Um, it's, this, is, this was what the neighbor guy told me. Um, her and her husband was in a 20-year methane-fueled violent relationship. That's what the neighbor guy told me. And there was a girl on top of the hill. Um, her name's Emily. And supposedly they both did meth together. Uh, he knows that for a fact because he used to go up there. He was trying to date Emily. And when he found out Emily did meth, he didn't want nothing to do with her, but he, when he went up there to drink with Emily, uh, she was up there too. Uh, the lady that I went up there with, she was up there and he actually witnessed her smoking meth with Emily. Okay. So you've never had any issues with any substances other than alcohol? Absolutely not. I'm totally against meth. Okay. That was my one question. So thank you. Yeah, I'm totally against it. Yes. Any follow up? I haven't heard. Thank you. Okay. All right, Mr. Rickabaugh. Uh, this is now that time that I spoke of where you get a chance to share any part in information uh, that you weren't able to share uh, that came up along the way. Here's your opportunity to share with us any more information that would be helpful towards your case. Um, other than I, I'm looking forward to getting back into the church. Um, as soon as I get out, um, I have Fort Des Moines. I have friends there, um, Kim, Chris, and Kyle. Me and Kyle, used, he's a CEO there now. He works in the kitchen. Um, me and him used to be chefs together. And uh, th they are really my family. They became my family. And I'm looking forward to seeing them all again. And this time, getting it right. Um, that's all I can tell you guys. I'm a good guy. I believe um, I love my community. It's just that um, at 57, I don't bounce back like I used to. Um, I'm trying to nav I'm sorry. I'm trying to navigate this, and um, I think this time I'll have it. Okay, Mr. Rickerbaugh, I appreciate you sharing. Now you sit back, relax, listen to our deliberation as we communicate your case. And then uh, I will look to come back with you to explain it all with the decision. All right. Colleagues, anyone wants to share their position? Uh, I can. Um, so his TDD is in January of 26, so about 14, 15 months. 
this will give him time to get through the work release program again, to get stable, um, make sure that he has steady employment. Sounds like he was doing well after the last time he left work release and then, you know, lost employment kind of out of his own control. So getting him back out there with the support to get set back up um, will be helpful. The codes I'm looking at, I really just have the 40A for substance abuse and the 50A. Okay, all right. All right, thank you, Meredith. Uh, Jesse. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I'm in agreement with the DOC recommendation. Uh, same code as Meredith said. Uh, I think he had a good interview. I, I didn't hear any fluffing or padding of his story and it lined up accordingly. So, and it seemed to be an isolated incident after 30 years of marriage with no incident as well. So I'm confident with this release and I, I just hope that he can stick to his plan and everything falls in place. Thank you, colleagues. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and explain uh, to the best of my abilities to him. All right, Mr. Rickabaugh, as you heard, uh, my colleagues was able to share their thoughts to their decision and you didn't hear mine because I am in agreement with everything that they said. So since I'm in an agreement, I will take that time to share with you what we came about. But what I will disclose before I share the codes is I thought your interview was good. I thought you was transparent. I thought you showed some humility. I thought you also showed some selflessness. I also uh, felt that you shared some, you know, of what you're trying to be responsible for and, and just being transparent uh, uh, with the honesty of where you were at trying a new relationship and didn't really give it much time from the 30 years of history that you had with your wife and uh, didn't talk those things through to some helpful people that had your best interests at heart. All right, but with the foundation and things that you are preparing to embark upon with this new start, we're hopeful that you will put the plan, as my colleague said, in place so that you can navigate uh, through your journey and uh, 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 pursue the relationships with your grandkids, and new relationships that you encounter. With that being said, we are in agreement with DOC's position uh, and recommendation. Uh, so that is work release. So what that code is, is the WRG C11P. <clears throat> the other code that is significant was the 40A, and that's for substance abuse. Uh, that is noted only. And then maybe your PO might decide some other things, but you all will definitely get a chance to talk through since you initially didn't have too much problems talking with your PO at the time prior to your uh, choice. Uh, and then the last is the 50A, uh, just making sure that you stay out of liquor stores and uh, just those establishments that has a high volume and high income of alcohol and not what's on the menu, if that makes sense. Yes, sir. I, I, would, I would all through that. Um, back in my day, I liked to have a cold beer, believe that. But uh, with my situation at this age, that would not be good. I have problems getting out of bed as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, Mr. Rickabal. And that will conclude our uh, interview. Uh, do you have any questions? No, thank you very much for seeing me and understanding all right. Good luck to you, sir. Good luck. Thank you. That's it. That's it. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, now <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, guy. Well, I told you. Now, now, how is it possible that this parole board has no? He's locked up for DV, and they asked him about it, and he's like. Ah, they went into downstairs, my son. It's insane. It's madness. They gave him compliment after compliment. I, I, I don't know. Do you want to throw things at your TV? Because it just doesn't make any sense. They got like they got like these giant monitors and computers in front of them, and I mean that you would assume they have the same records that we have, or clearly they don't, or they are don't look. There's something wrong. We need. 
it doesn't even take an investigative journalist. It just takes someone in the media that can say, look at this parole board. This is negligent. This is, is what are the words? It's like, it, 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 it feels illegal. They're handpicked by the governor to protect the state of Iowa from people who are in prison. And you're going to release someone who lies, lie after lie after lie after lie, who takes zero accountability. But not only do you release him, but you pat him on the back, you hand him a cookie, you give him a compliment. Let me read to you his record. It starts in 1992. Assault, 8 10, 92. Eight days later, he gets carrying a concealed weapon illegally, open container, o operating without a vehicle, operating without safety belts. A month later, he gets DV with intent causing injury. Two counts, by the way, his wife. He gets 103196 violation of custodial parent order. 420 1997. He has his victim as his as his it looks like three victims in one day, including his wife. Assault with the use of a weapon. Assault with the use of a weapon. He has an eviction. He has another failure to drive without a license. He has an OWI in 811-2007. What did you say? Oh, I don't have a problem drinking. I used to have a cold beer every once in a while. 1023-2013 intoxication. Another DV causing bodily injury. 1211-2014, he hurt a juvenile. Okay. I believe it's his son or someone's, his wife's son. I don't know. 10-16-20. So I guess he got prison time for that because the next one's not till 10-16-2020. Violation of probation, driving under suspension, possession of the devil's lettuce, and of course, DV. Impeding ear blood flow. Bodily injury. And I guess he got locked up for that because it, now it's all the way until October 5th, 2023, which again is, is like a year to the date. This parole hearing took place on 10 16 so a year from when he committed the offense, not even from when he got like sentenced. And it's DV, use of weapon, harassment, DV, assault, injury, and false imprisonment. That's what he's in for. And what did he, what, let's just, what did he say? He said, I just paused to listen to it again. So, so are you saying this was an isolated incident? He goes, yeah, 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 this was. I mean, I spent my whole life, we had a perfect marriage, 30, 30 years. I listen, let's, let's just play, play this. So I guess what I'm asking is, you're, are you saying that this is an isolated incident, the domestic, it's n that, nothing like that's ever happened again, and you feel confident? Oh, yes, sir, like definitely, definitely. I'm not, I'm not a violent individual. Um, me and my wife, we had a really good 30-year marriage um, up until the time she came down with cancer. Um, I, I was a deacon in my church. Um, basically, all, all my days were spent working with the church and the community. I even uh, did the community dinners. I cooked and spent my own money for all that. Um, helping others is what I, that was my whole life. So, and I, I, I spent most of my days, um, most of my weekends were spent with my grandkids. We were either fishing, mushroom mutton, or serving the church. So. I have no more questions for you. Thank you for answering those. I mean, what can you say, guys? I, there's just not, you don't need any more proof. This is so dangerous. It's, 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 it's I, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. I mean, we see, we see how poorly the Iowa Pro Boy handles hearing after hearing after hearing, but there's no, there's nothing that you can say. If we sat down with all three of these board members and say, can you tell me why we have this information? Why don't you have it? Why do you not look at it? Why do you not challenge him on the fact that he's lying? Do, who is benefiting? 
Do you really think that someone with the history who 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 does who of this that now he's better because he spent a, a, another year in prison? I, I I just don't get it. This Iowa parole board is dangerous, and I can't wait. I can't wait for some news you know to pick this up and just show and and you're you know i, I can't I, th- th- there's going to have to be noise about this because this is not normal this is not acceptable this is i don't think there's anybody that would look at this and say no no, no this is good this is what department of corrections should be like this is how a parole I, I i don't see i don't care what side of the aisle you're on this is not i don't think there's anybody that would say that this is okay I mean, maybe a 1%, but it's crazy. Oh, there you have it. <laughs> Oof. And, uh, you know, people, you, when I heard Iowa, I think, wow, Iowa's going to be great. They're going to be tough, but they are the weakest state that we have covered by far. And with that, I'll let you go. Uh, I think you had a good interview. I, I did hear any fluffing or padding of his story and it lined up accordingly. Sounds like he was doing well after the last time he left work release and then, you know, lost employment kind of out of his own control. So is I thought your interview was good. I thought you was transparent. I thought you showed some humility. I thought you also showed some selflessness. I also uh, felt that you shared some, you know, of what you're trying to be responsible for and and just being transparent uh, uh, with the honesty of where you were at trying a new relationship and didn't really give it much time from the 30 years of history that you had with your wife and uh, didn't talk those things through to some helpful people that had your best interests at heart.